oh my gosh if i look a little tired if i look a little frazzled it would be the tiredness and frazzliness i just got in from class not a few minutes ago so i'm feeling very exhausted but i'm also feeling very excited to talk to you guys about this big old stack of books i have right here because i feel like we haven't done an update with each other on what wonderful amazing beautiful books have recently gone into these shelves and i also just got in from the rain it is a very cozy rainy day out there although i did not bring an umbrella so i got rained on all the way home i do want to say a huge thank you a lot of these as usual are gifts which is just crazy the fact that i can even say as usual so thank you so so much thank you michael thank you linda thank you lucy thank you kira there's definitely a few more people in here that i'll remember to thank when i get to theirs and as well some of these are thrifted by yours truly so Let's just get into it, I guess. Um, I'm really excited about this stack. I do have one more around the world challenge coming eventually, but none of these are for that haul, so I'm excited to talk about books. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm in such a big reading mood, so. The first one I have is Midnight's Children. This is a really beautiful, beautiful copy. Ah, I love this. So many people have told me I would absolutely just love this. So many people have recommended this to me. So this one, we follow Salim, who was born at the stroke of midnight, and so are a bunch of other children. That's why they're called Midnight's Children on August 15th, 1947, which is the very moment of India's independence. But Salim grows up to learn the ominous consequences of this coincidence. So apparently all these children who were born at midnight at the moment of India's independence, they grow up and they realize that their lives are strangely mirroring their countries now and what that means for them, their nation, the events that are going on. On. It says his health and well-being are inextricably bound to those of his nation. But there's also another twist because most remarkable are the telepathic powers linking him with India's 1,000 other Midnight's children, all born at that initial hour and all of them have different magical gifts, I believe. So, ah, oh my gosh. I know this is also a family saga. I'm just really, really interested to read this one. All right, and this next one is another Murakami. I've not yet started my Murakami reading thing. What I want to do is read his works in chronological order. Um, whenever I do get my hands on the first one and I start that whole journey, I'll let you know about it in some way, shape, or form because I know a lot of people are interested. But this is Murakami's like memoir, um, his nonfiction memoir, what I talk about when I talk about running. So Murakami is a runner. He runs. <laughs> he really likes running. Um, and so this is a meditation on what it means to run, why he runs, what he gets from running, how running relates to writing and his craft how both of those things, I think, help each other, how they intertwine and connect, and it just sounds wonderful. I think really what it breaks down to is like the solitariness in both of those activities. When you're running, like it's just you and your body. When you're writing, it's just you and your words, and so how those kind of connect. Next, we have No Longer Human by Zamu Dazai. It looks very interesting, and as well, it's quite a short one, but this is about our protagonist who feels himself slipping away from his humanity and slipping away from like being human. He no longer identifies as part of that species. He completely disqualifies himself from counting as a human being. He feels himself completely distanced, other, separate. I know a lot of No Longer Human as well plays around with stuff that's going on in post-war Japan, um, so I'm sure that like discontent and everything will also be a part in him like deciding to no longer identify himself as a human being. He narrates a seemingly normal life even while he feels himself incapable of understanding human beings. And this is also semi-autobiographical, so that is really interesting. Oh, this next book came with really lovely notes. Um, thank you so much, Arka. And this one says, Dear Emma, this one I picked for its name, and it turned out to be equally haunting. Hope you enjoy it. So this is Latitudes of Longing. First of all, first of all, the cover. I really, really want to pick this one up soon. Like, I am so excited about this. I read the back and I just like drowned in the synopsis. Um, so if I can read you like a part of it, because it really, really hooked me. Um, but essentially this one follows a bunch of different people that goes all across India from an island to a valley to a city and a snow desert to tell a love story of epic proportions but this is kind of what like hooked me um, we follow a scientist who studies trees and a clairvoyant who speaks to them a geologist working to end futile wars over a glacier octogenarian lovers a mother struggling to free her revolutionary son a yeti who seeks human companionship a turtle who transforms first into a boat and then into a woman, and the ghost of an evaporated ocean as restless as the continents. This is also a work of magical realism. I just, wow, this sounds like absolutely breathtaking. Sounds like it's going to be an absolute new favorite. Um, I cannot wait to read this. Like that, did you, like the synopsis, right? Am I right? 
um i would totally have bought this if i like passed it at a bookstore and just picked it up and saw the cover and read the back so so promising thank you so much for this um cannot wait to read this just cannot wait so ooh, so good okay what is this oh okay another good one this is such a good book haul this is just probably one of my favorite book hauls i've done so it's been a while since i've read more Anne carson i don't know why i really don't know why i love her so much i love everything i've read from her she's so much out she's brilliant um but this is a really really small one so this is norma jean baker of troy i believe this was first performed as a play and it's all about beauty um, and of course like that archetypal beauty of Helen. It's a meditation on the destabilizing and destructive power of beauty, drawing together Helen of Troy and Marilyn Monroe. I have no idea what else this entails, like knowing Anne Carson, it's just gonna be everything, <laughs> just everything. And this is so, so short, so I should definitely read this soon. Also on my shelves from her, I have Autobiography of Red, which is my absolute favorite. I highly recommend that one. I love what she does with ancient Greek everything um mythology and language and plays and blah 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 but the other one i have on my shelves i haven't yet read is decreation um so maybe i'll pick this one up though because it's very slim um and i'm very intrigued what she does with beauty and stuff like that so anyway okay then we have the hungry tide by amitav ghosh i oh this one also looks amazing this is from jeffrey um, and this was actually a uh, early birthday present, so thank you. <laughs> My birthday was in July, so we definitely were due for a book haul catch up. But this is The Hungry Tide, which is also set in India. Um, and we have two people who are not from the location in which we are set, which is the immense archipelago of tiny islands known as the Sunderbands. Life here is precarious, ruled by the unforgiving tides and the constant threat of attack by Bengal tigers. So we have two people who come to the Sunderbands who are from... I believe Delhi, yes. So we have a businessman from Delhi and we also have a marine biologist who is searching for a rare dolphin that is said to be around these parts. Um, and these two people come to kind of rely on each other on both of their quests, which are of course very different, a businessman and a marine biologist. And then we travel deep into one of the most fascinating regions on earth where the treacherous forces of nature and human folly threaten to destroy a way of life. So, wow, wow, wow. I can't remember where I heard about this. Actually, I think I might've heard about this from Tanya at bookish topics so i'll leave her below um because i think that's where i heard about this and i think she really liked it and i love everything she loves really so um yeah that is that one <gasps> okay this next one this book haul is getting out of hand i'm just too excited to pick up every single one of these this this book did my fridge really did my fridge really have to oh my god my fridge is so loud we gotta we gotta take the books and run. It's time to move this fiasco to the bedroom. Let's go. <sighs> so graceful. Always the pinnacle of grace. The next book, I've had my eye on. My singular eye on it. Where did I hear about this? I heard about it on Goodreads years ago. I saw it in so many bookstores that I went to. I never bought it. Always wanted to read it. This vlog, this vlog, <laughs> this book is gonna get a whole vlog. Um, because this is the book of S or S. Um, this is by JJ Abrams and Doug Dorse. First of all, it's absolutely beautiful. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about this right now. I can feel it. It looks like a library book. And then when you take it out, the actual book inside is called The Ship of Theseus by a completely different author. Um, and then it looks like a library book. So the premise of this is something similar to, I feel like, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler. Um, maybe gives me like House of Leaves vibes a little bit, but when you open it up... Okay, I don't want things to fall out of the places that they are. It is a library book where every... Oh, no, 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 this is what I was talking about. It is a library book where every single page is written on. There's stuff inside for you to find. Oh, there's postcards. And just, there's literally something it seems like almost every single page. So, as you might have guessed, it is a book, The Ship of Theseus. So, okay, wait, let me explain this better. The Book of S is about the book, The Ship of Theseus, and its fake author. Um, and this library book essentially gets left, like, in a library. And we have these two people. We have um, a graduate student, and I believe, no, maybe she's an undergraduate student. And then we have, like, a guy working on his master's or PhD, and they start to communicate um, and the margins of the ship of Theseus to find out more about what this book is, where, where and what happened to this author, because I think there's some weird things going on with that. Also gives me Shadow of the Wind vibes as well. 
um, and then they start to develop a relationship of some sort and confess all of their secrets to each other. Yeah, so the ship of Theseus is this author's final work in which a man with no past is shanghaied onto a strange ship with a monstrous crew and launched on a disorienting and perilous journey. And then we have Jennifer and Eric, who are both facing crucial decisions about who they are, who they might become, and how much they're willing to trust another person with their passions, hurts, and fears. When I say I want to drop everything in my life and read this book, when I say it, I mean it. I freaking mean it. I can just not wait to read this, film the whole thing, because it looks like it's going to be an absolutely interactive, wonderful, weird, crazy experience. So that is The Ship of Theseus. Oh, this has been like on my dream list of books to read for so, so long. So cannot believe I'm holding it in my hands. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much. A little too excited about this one. I have university. I have university work. This next book was a gift. And once again, thank you so much. And this is You Must Change Your Life. The story of Rainer Maria Rilke and August Radin. And this is by Rachel Corbett. So I believe this is an account by Rachel Corbett of the time that Rilke was staying with Rodin in Paris. Um, if you don't know, Rilke is a poet and for a time he went to live with Rodin in Paris to kind of study under him. Um, Rodin was definitely a bit of a tutor and a bit of a huge massive influence on Rilke and Rilke's own life and writing and work in philosophy. And he also wrote a monograph on Rodin while he was there, which I also have on my shelves, and he just learned and grew so much. Rilke was, I think, 20, he was in his 20s at the time, and Rodin was in his 60s, so we get to go back to early 20th century Paris, um, and it's just a portrait of them and their circle, and yeah, especially I believe it says it focuses on Rilke's letters and letters to a young poet since that was around the same time, so so excited to read this. Um, I've actually never read any biography or anything like that surrounding Rilke or those he was connected to. I've only ever read from him, so this should be really, really interesting, and maybe one day I'll get to write my own something like this, so that is You Must Change Your Life. And then we have A Mercy by Toni Morrison. This one I found at a thrift store. I decided to pick it up. I got to read Beloved last year, which was one of my favorite reads of the year, so I'm very much looking forward to working the rest of my way through her work. This one is set in the 1680s when the slave trade was still in its infancy. In the Americas, virulent religious and class divisions, prejudice and oppression were rife, providing the fertile soil in which slavery and race hatred were planted and took root. So we follow a bunch of different people in A Mercy. We have Jacob, who's an Anglo-Dutch trader, and we literally just follow so many people and their lives intertwining um, in this early stage in the 1680s. So. I can- oh, I just cannot wait to read anything she writes, honestly. I'm so glad she has so many books left for me to discover because I was blown away just by everything in Beloved and she's just a writer I want to get to know so much more. Um, so that is a mercy. It's also really beautiful, so that is that one. This next one I also found uh, at thrift store. Hadn't ever heard of it, but I picked it up because it looked vaguely- or actually kind of looked really dark academia eats me, and that is You Deserve Nothing by Alexander Maxik. Um, it just really caught my attention. So this one is also set in Paris, actually, and we follow a professor who's quite, you know, he's enigmatic, he's charismatic, <laughs> um, and all of his students, like, flock towards him, and they just pretty much, like, write down and absorb everything that he teaches them and what he is teaching them. I believe he's, like, philosophy or literature, one of the two, literature. Um, and his teaching of Camus, Faulkner, Sartre, Keats, and other kindred souls breathe life into their sense of social justice and this ethical philosophy mindset that he is preaching to his students and that everyone really thinks like he stands for basically but when paris with like its atmosphere and its lushness and everything that the back says that like spills out of paris in this book is presented to him it's kind of like his fall from grace as a professor his fall from respect um and it's like is what you teach does that dictate your life like can you be the teacher of something and not believe in it sort of thing. And then it explores everyone's attitudes towards him, how they've changed, um, how their level of respect for him has gone up or down, and yeah. His fall will render him a criminal in the eyes of some and all too human in the eyes of others. So I have no idea what goes on in this book except that, like I think that's a very vague synopsis. I feel like it's going to be extremely character driven um, and really beautiful and lush and hopefully lyrical and descriptive too. So. I'm excited. We shall see. This next book I've been hearing a lot about recently on booktube and it did come in my P.O. box, but I don't think there was a note. No, there's no note. 
So if this was you, if you gave me open water, thank you so much. This is an absolutely gorgeous, wow, wow, wow. I believe this is a debut if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is by Caleb Azuma Nelson. So I've heard absolutely, absolutely beautiful things. I've heard it so poetic. This one is set in the UK. I believe we're set in London. Yes, in a London pub and two young people meet for the first time. They form a relationship, there's a connection and then we follow them. I don't think it's through the course of their lives but just through the course of their relationship with each other, falling in love, what this means for them. Um, how they experience it, how they go through it. So yeah, I've heard amazing things. I've heard amazing things about this. So many people have been reading this recently and ah, I cannot wait. So that is open water. Next we have Titus Grown by Mervyn Peak. Thank you so much. I did not know this book existed. I've never heard mention of this book, but I read the back and I'm like, this is what I want to read so badly. So this is like an epic fantasy. I don't know how I haven't heard about this. Um, this is part of the Gormenghast novels, I guess and it represents one of the most brilliantly sustained flights of gothic imagination. Give it to me. And so we followed Titus in this one, who is our protagonist. When the novel opens, he's just been born, but he's been born at this castle and he is the heir to Lord Supplegrave. Not so subtle. Uh, he stands to inherit the miles of rambling stone and mortar that form Castle Gormenghast, but in this castle, Apparently there are prophecies and laws and rituals that dictate like the future of everything or how everything works and that like set down his life in stone before he was even born. If you have heard anything about this, if you read this, please let me know. I don't know how this wasn't, this wasn't even on my radar, but thank you for throwing this in my face because I clearly needed it. So that is Titus Grown. I feel like a lot of these were birthday presents because they came in my PO box as well. This one didn't have a note either. So thank you so much. This is The Truants by Kate Weinberg. Um, I think I heard Kira was reading this a while ago. I can't remember if she liked it or not, but this is another one that gives off vague, dark academia vibes um, because this time we're following Jess, who is a student. I think she's like a first year student in college or university or something, and she is drawn into this tightly knit group. Um, and in dark academia, I don't know, there's always this trope where like the group is like headed or under the supervision of this weird professor who gets in a little bit too deep and who starts to like let spill over the stuff that they're teaching um, into the real world and see how that affects things. So in this one, this group begins to darken as they share secrets, lovers, and finally a tragedy. Um, and then it just says she has to ask herself, what is the true cost of an extraordinary life? So I have no idea what the heck they're studying, what the heck is going on. Um, this cover is really interesting. Um, and it says it's as much a coming of age tale as a murder mystery. So. Sounds like it's perfect for spooky season. So that is The Truants. This next one I'm really excited for because it's by an author I read this year and her work was so great. I read Remote Control really early this year and loved it. So um, so happy to have Binti in my hands. I didn't know it was this small, but that also motivates me to read it more because I'm sure this packs such a huge punch. So this is by Nady Okorafor. And like I said, I read Remote Control. Highly recommend. That is a wonderful piece of futuristic sci-fi. And I believe Binti is around kind of the same thing um, because we're following our protagonist. Her name is Binti and she is the first of the Himba people ever to be offered a place at Unza University, the finest institution of higher learning in the galaxy. The world she seeks to enter is long warred with the Meduse, an alien race that has become the stuff of nightmares. So their university has wronged the alien species. Okay, I'm interested. I'm really interested because I think this book is going to talk about so much in such a short amount of time, but like remote control just had so much in it that I just didn't really realize was there until the end. And so this one, I feel like it's just going to talk about oh, just good stuff. So that is that one. This one Kira gave me for my birthday and that is my dark Vanessa. Thank you so much, Kira. Um, this is by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This one I've heard about for years and then I was feeling like, you know what? I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I think I want to read it. And so this one is split between two timelines. We're always following Vanessa. It's split between, I think, 2000 and 2017. In 2017, we have the Me Too movement and a whole bunch of women come forward in this one specific case to come out and speak out about um, this professor who was teaching at the school that Vanessa was attending when she was 15 in the year 2000. And in the year 2000, if we go back, uh, Vanessa and her literature teacher, they were having an affair in 2000. Um, and I think it wrestles with just 
everything. I've heard so many people say like, obviously really prepare yourself for this. Um, and I've heard so many people say it is just put together so well, like done so well. I don't know why I'm gonna pick this up. I was kind of contemplating picking it up soon, but we shall see. This one is from Jeff. And this was also for my birthday. <laughs> and this is Nightfall. Thank you so much, Jeff. This is Nightfall and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov. I've only read, um, what have I read? Oh, what is that one called? Where it's like, not enough information to compute. The last question, the last question. I've only read the last question for uni actually a while ago. Um, but this is a collection of 20 classic short stories. But the main one is Nightfall which is all about the tale of a world with eternal sun that is suddenly plunged into total darkness and utter madness. But we also talk about machines that learn to think for themselves, um, the discovery that earthlings are being destroyed by a mysterious kind of psychological virus, a day when walking outdoors becomes a sign of psychosis, and many more. So I'm excited. I really enjoyed. I, I don't know if I really love the last question, but I would love to explore more Asimov. So that is that one, and this is so beautiful. Thank you. Okay, and the last book I have here is another Anne Carson. That is Grief Lessons, Four Plays by Euripides. Oh, oh, Anne Carson. Anne Carson reminds me why I love language and why I want to eat, eat words. I literally just want to eat words. So um, like she does with a few other collections I have on my shelf, like for example, I have the Oresteia, which is her translation of three plays all concerning the same tragedy by three different ancient Greek tragedians. But um, this is her translation of four plays by Euripides. I am excited because one of the plays is Alcestis, which was like featured in The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, which I read a while ago, and I've been wanting to read and get my hands on since reading The Silent Patient. Um, so I cannot wait to read Grief Lessons. Like Anne Carson, I, mm, one of my favorite writers, if you haven't experienced her, go meet her. Like go out, meet her, shake her hand, get a cup of coffee with her. Mm, she will change your life. So cool. That is the book haul for today. Um, I, yeah, this was like one of my favorite book hauls I've ever done. I think like every time I look at every single one of these books, I'm like, I need to read you right now. Sadly, we are in university and I have a lot of university readings. Speaking of which, I need to go get a move on with. So I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing really well. Thank you so just Well, thank you so much if you sent me any of these books. You are absolutely wonderful. If you've read any of these, tell me tell me some weird things about them just tell me the wackiest things about them that will make me want to read them or not want to read them if you didn't like them anyway um and if you have any recommendations like these yeah let me know too and let me know the last book you bought <sighs> do i want to have a nap or do i want to study i guess we'll find out mm. okay ciao